Welcome back everybody. On Sunday, the 21st of March was World Down Syndrome Day and that is the day in which we uh, highlight the, dis the disorder as well as uh, you know, try to find ways in which uh, and raise awareness and uh, raise and enhance the ways in which persons with this, is, this disorder can uh, have improved lives. Join me this morning to speak more on the topic because we did celebrate yesterday by wearing our funky socks and, and stuff to show our solidarity. Uh, with those who have the Down syndrome. Um, but to give us some information about it today, it's Jason Clark, who is a social services officer with the Division of Health and Wellness uh, right there in Tobago. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. <laughs> You're bright and good cherry morning. this morning. Good morning, good morning. Yes, yeah. yeah, good morning, Kyrie and TTT and Trinidad and Tobago. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you for joining us this morning. So, uh, first off, what is Down syndrome? What are what, uh, what is it exactly? Okay, well, Down syndrome, it's, um, that's where um, the, the, the duplication of the um, 21st chromosome, and that occurs at birth, you know, where, um, where babies who, um, who, who are born with Down syndrome, you know, have um, the facial features and, um, you know, the, the, the different parts um, of their body that um, might be, you know, impacted in terms of uh, Down syndrome, but it's the 21st. Right. The of the 21st chromosome. And, you know, so we are here to share some information on, on the condition and at the risk public awareness. Of course. And uh, are there any known causes for Down syndrome? Well, actually, you know, um, in research, you know, um, you know, put it more along the lines of hereditary. Right. And, you know, um, yes, more or less hereditary. Right. So what are some of the myths about, the, about this condition that need to be dispelled? Okay, well, the thing is, um, uh, Down syndrome, as, as uh, any other um, disability, you know, some folks um, may, think, may feel, you know, that it might be a curse. You know, um, how come my child was born with this Down syndrome, with this condition? And that's one of the myths and stereotypes if we dispel. Because, um, you know, um, being born with Down syndrome does not mean, you know, yeah, one's life uh, is ended or has ended. Right. You know, that it's a new way of life. And what, that's one of the myths that, you know, it's, it's, it's not a curse. It's, it's not a disease. So, um, you know, so that you, you, you could help somebody. I mean, yes, we have um, COVID-19 around, but it, it's a, a condition that you, you cannot catch. Right. To see what, I mean, it's, it's, it's uh, acquired immune and that you could catch it. So that's, those are some of the myths that we must dispel. And um, what are some of the ways in which the condition affects the individual with Down syndrome? Okay, well, in terms of Down syndrome, we know you have um, some of the, the, the conditions like the, the breathing challenges. You know, many persons, um, some of the, the individuals with Down syndrome are more breeders. And know when um, when they are um, born, some of them were born with the with the do so with the um, hole in the heart. You know, so see these are some of the conditions and then you have um, some intellectual disabilities might attach to it because uh, just like autism, which is a spectrum disorder, uh, we look at Down Dox syndrome in the same manner where, you know, you have uh, some high up on the spectrum, some right. low down on the spectrum. So then you will have some people with mo mobility challenges, some people with speech impairments. Uh, yes. Now, you uh, mentioned earlier that, you know, uh, one of the myths around it is that, you know, people are saying it's a curse and they're different. They treat uh, with people with Down syndrome very differently and sometimes in a, in a hostile way. How can we as a society do better? How can we uh, include persons with Down syndrome in our society and, and not have them feel any lesser? Okay, yes. And you see, we as a society, we need to uh, break down this attitudinal barrier because, you know, um, the, there are many barriers to inclusion. And we know the, the, the overall topic that which we push for is inclusion, and we need to break down the the, the attitude, uh, those stereotypes and myths, as we mentioned a while ago. And we need to realize that uh, persons with Down syndrome, as all persons with disabilities, have rights. Right. And we need to we need to move from the stage of awareness, which we have been doing sensitization and awareness over the years. And you know, at the World Down Syndrome Day conference yesterday, uh, which was held. Um, a hybrid or a blended approach 
where we had a small gathering and then we had it more virtually. Uh, at that conference, you know, we stress the importance of moving from out the awareness stage and now moving to lobby our government now to implement the legislation that we could ensure and we could guarantee that the rights of persons with disabilities, especially as we focus in on Down syndrome now, uh, is upheld. So we know we have the national policy, we have other framework, we have the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. So we need to ensure now that we have legislation in place where we could have equality in terms of education. We need to see uh, inclusive education in terms of the health system. I mean, our, the, our division of health, wellness and family development, we are playing our part under our family development department or disability unit. We have our technical vocational center where we provide training, food skills training to persons with disabilities. So we need to see more programs like these because at our, our, our center, we deal with training of our students that we equip them with the necessary skills and the independent living skills and life skills so that they could look for meaningful jobs. They could live independently. We have a few students with Down syndrome and we have been catering for them. So we use this opportunity this year to highlight them. You know, like we have uh, Rachel, we have Jeremy who have been rocking his socks. Uh, Rachel Jemmett who, who did a planting project quite well. She's doing the, the craft where she has been engaged. Sometimes she will get orders when she learn her craft pieces. Sometimes she will get orders to make them make more items to sell. So we need to really highlight persons, you know, with Down syndrome. Surely. And show the value that they have. Definitely, definitely. And before we go, uh, how can persons access the education that the Division of Health and Wellness in Tobago offers? Yes, well, actually, uh, my number is it's 4972411, and uh, we have our te technical vocational center, 639-2511, and this uh, you can call and get the information, and we will we will put put, to, uh, put you onto the necessary agency because our our um, family development department has a suite of of services, and we need to 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 get these services, you know, to people that you know they could um check us and we will deliver <laughs> all right well jason clark i want to thank you so much for joining us this morning again you could uh, look back on the feed there to get that uh phone number one more time where you could check out uh, the health and the division of health and wellness in tobago yourself and get more information jason clark is the social services officer of the same i want to thank you very much we're now going to take a short break and come back with so much more right here on the now morning show